So I'm looking after about $6 billion of um, projects revenue for, across six business units. So we have our aerospace um, business, we have our Honeywell building services or building solutions business that does a lot of uh, security, uh, fire and HVAC. We have our Honeywell process solutions, does a lot of um, automation. Intelligrated, which is the business I'm embedded with, does uh, warehouse automation. So think, you know, 1.6 million square foot distribution centers with conveyor and robotics, all of that kind of stuff. Smart Energy is, is exactly that, it's Smart Energy Meters. And then uh, UOP Engineering and Projects is doing a lot of work within the um, oil and gas industry. So as you can see, a very um, diverse portfolio. We have projects that range from 25 to 50,000 that happen over a weekend. And we have projects that are half a billion dollars that, that, that span over multiple years. So a bre breadth of types of projects, size of projects, and a very uh, global footprint. We are dealing with seven SBGs in Honeywell where we're deploying this. And historically, they operate in a different way. So one would manage project this way, one would manage project this way. These guys are on level three maturity. These guys have never seen a tool. So you have different, different foundations. And so this, this allowed us, um, when I came on board, to reset. We scared everyone. Everyone started to be super worried. But now we have full control and everyone on board. And when we're introducing a change, everyone needs to know they need to come to change control board with everything documented, all parties aligned to it. And we really are very careful with introducing any changes to the core. And that's because we have so much versatility and we need to run with a tremendous speed. And I will show you our roadmap. It's super, super aggressive. So this became very important for us. That's how we create that value, right? So we start the schedule and the project tracking. That's the project information, the milestones, risks, uh, and some dashboarding, the time and resource management. That's really about the resources, capacity planning, and the timesheet management. And then we're getting basically to that fundamental part that the whole leadership is waiting for, which is where we expect the biggest value to be delivered. But even by adopting the first one, we have started to see a huge value, just by the fact that one leader can look at the entire portfolio of a $6 billion industry and seeing the risks across all the projects in one tool, in one dashboard, just by click of a button. And you know, people are saying, oh, we have that, we have that, we have that. Yeah, you guys have that. This guy doesn't have that, and that's what this brought. We use Jira in the back end, and we use Cora in the front end. Now, one of the great things we figured out is when we started this, we had spreadsheets, we had smart sheets, we have so all Microsoft projects, all sort of other tools, and I was like, we're delivering Cora, guys, right? We should use Cora to project manage the Cora delivery. And isn't that fantastic? It's very simple. We didn't figure it out early, and we figured it out later, luckily. But it's fantastic that actually your people start using the tool and presenting the business, hey, we're going to be deploying a schedule, and you're actually using Cora schedule to show them where they are. You're using Cora risk register to show them, hey, these are the risks that we have on the project. So instead of doing presentations uh, during the toll gate reviews, we actually get into this plan and say, OK, guys, we're going to be doing release one pilot, and here are the major steps that we need to achieve. We unclick it, and we show them what's going to happen. And it has proven as a fantastic thing. It brings people on board, and it helps us uh, to collaborate better. Cora is really the planning engine and the triggering engine that drives and determines what those financials are going to look like. So if I pick an example, you have, um, you have um, timesheets. So we would be entering time in Cora. And that in Cora, you would define how many hours per which resource but my ERP system calculates and converts the hours to the cost. So what I do is a bi-directional integration where on one way I enter the time in Cora because I want to have one PM experience. I want my PMs to sit just in Cora. I want my back office to do invoicing in SAP, but my PM doesn't need to do that. My PM says in Cora, this milestone is ready to be built, move it, and it's executed in the and the ERP system, but then I'm bringing those costs back because then what I want to do is to do the forecasting and I want to have the end-to-end -end view of my project in terms of the actuals and the plan.
So it's bidirectional integration. ERP is still the financial system of the source of truth. And Cora is the operational management system and the one source of truth for the PMs. And we, we've been doing this for eight months. Um, and in that business alone, by all the things we implemented, we, we reduced our cost overruns by about $200 million. And we identified $250 million of change orders that we hadn't gone after because we didn't detect them you know, just with some of these changes. So simple changes can have a huge impact on, on uh, the projects. These projects are at very low margin generally. It doesn't take much to really take them off track.